Welcome back, everybody. Time for Core 2021 Collector's Booster Box number two. I know it kind of gets lost in the background there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So I opened another one. Hopefully you saw that video already. Uh, got some pretty good pulls in it. Can't complain. Now we're going to check out this one. I'm a little behind everybody else on these, but that's because I didn't get them when I was hoping to. Yeah, yeah well. That's such a life. <laughs> we're going to break into this one and see what we get. There's some spicy, spicy meatballs in here. Some good stuff. Uh, hopefully we'll get the majority of it, you know. <laughs> so I did not get an Ugin in the last box. So hopefully we'll get an Ugin in this one. I also did not get a Grim Tutor in the last one. So hopefully we get the Tuda and the Uga. Tuda and Uga. Um, and, but we definitely got a lot of damage. Can you see it? There you go. See it right up there. Ba ding. Yeah. Uh, and of course, the cut all the way down the center. All the tokens are destroyed, just like uh, their own. So this time they're actually worse because, as you can see, there's there's dings in the uh, the top of the card as well. See that one too? Big old gouges. Yeah. So yeah, even when I sell all these cards online, even though they're packed fresh, I tell people. They're not mint <laughs> because I can't guarantee mint this day and age with the way that uh, Watsy packages these things. Anyways, enough about that. Um, this little guy in draft, awesome. Little little chorister, anointed chorister. Uh, all right, so if you're not familiar with the layout of these packs, got your token in the back, but the packs are actually backwards. So the token's on top, but then the cards are back. Yeah, it's weird. Um, so <laughs> you got four commons all foil and then you'll have two uncommons that are foil in this case we got a shrine and then you'll get your planeswalker borderland so the alternate arts are all because they're the planeswalker art border they did a, a special border for each planeswalker in this set and this is uh the the red planeswalker border the chandra's border so and that's why it's kind of almost a little bit yeah like red and white kind of yeah but Island is really cool looking. It's the only one that kind of branches out from the others. Well, except the lily, the lily border, obviously, is purple, which is not even a magic color. So <laughs> there's that. Speaker of the Heavens, this guy, is, this guy is very underrated, I think. I think he's going to be a big thing to deal with here. Um, man, I, I played a couple of games against somebody using this guy, and they were popping out those four four angels, and I was just like, what? No. No, nasty angels. Go away. Um, so Speaker of the Heavens is our, our extended art non foil. And then we got a Maze Mind Tome. This one's actually really, really surprisingly good, too. I, I, was, I wasn't expecting much out of this one, except for the really cool artwork. Dude's brain is, like, peeking through that book. Do you see that? Weird. Anyway, X-ray book. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this one's surprisingly good. And then we got our first box stopper. We got a Necromantia. Necromantia, not Necromantia. I'm pretty sure. Could be wrong. But, anyways, Necromantia. Box stopper, gorgeous on the foil. Not sure how that one's gonna play out yet. Let's uh, see if I can move my piles down just a little so we can do two rows this way. Last video I did them kind of down this way and you couldn't really see all the cards. Then we got our Teferi's Tutelage as, as our first. Uh, so you're gonna get two of the Planeswalker borders, commons or uncommons in the first two slots. And speaking of Chandra, there's our, our beautiful little lady right there. Chandra, full art but non-foil but it is our first Mythic, so we're going to move the uh, promo cards out of the way here. There we go. All right, and then we get foil cards. These can be commons, uncommons, or the last spot can be rare or Mythic. Not in this case. <laughs> so there you go. Common and uncommon foils in that in the last two spots. All right, moving along. I think the Cultivate can be like in any of those spots. I don't know. Cultivate's a weird card. And a damage separling token with a beast on the back. Never good when you got a beast on your back. You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay, commons. <laughs> Dad jokes. I'll be here all night. Try the duck. Bad deal. And Brigarine Surge for uncommons. And then a forest. And then Vito. I love Vito. I built a couple decks with Vito in them here recently. And I threw them in my uh, red black sack deck because this guy is fun. Oh, man, people hate him, too. They see Vito, they're like, ah, kill it, kill it. <laughs> He's awesome. Uh, see the truth, 
is our first foil rare, and then Teferi's Ageless Insight. Well, this would be pretty good if it was actually like a, a, a draft or something, or, or sealed, but not so good for collector's packs. Then we got a Magma, and then we got a Protege as our alternates there, Planeswalker Borders. Then we got Grooks Harbinger, non-foil. And then we got a Teferi's Tutelage, and I've been seeing something really spicy peek out, and I think I know what it is. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. It's the man himself. The man, the myth, the legend. Full box topper. There you go. The very master of time, number 281. Honestly, couldn't tell you the difference. Couldn't tell the difference between any of the, any of the numbers. Can you guys tell the difference? Because I can't tell the difference. Um, he's really good if you're playing him. Really annoying if you're playing against him. And no matter which number he is. So, <laughs> whatever art you're talking about. He's, uh, he's... He's terrible to see on the opponent's side of the board, but really fun to see on your side of the board. <laughs> so, the very master of time. Nice. Full Monty box topper. Mythic. Full art. Yep. Can't beat that, Paul. Now, right. moving on. So that's two boxes, two Teferis. All right. Hopefully I get the, the Oogie and the Grim. And I would love to get cards without damage on them. Uh, yeah, I know they're just tokens. Doggo. Roof. All right, commons, uncommons. We got planes, the Amon Kip planes. Ooh, Gadrock the Crown Sur Scourge, Crown Scourge, not Surge. He's a he's goofy. He looks like a doofy looking evil dragon thing. I'm gonna beat you up. <laughs> and box topper, Idol of Endurance. There we go. Our second box topper and our third box topper, an animal sanctuary. Two box toppers and one pack. That is the one cool thing about these uh, Core 21 um, collector's boxes is that you can get two box toppers back to back in that, that foil rare slot. And I see a containment breeze peeking out from back there. Uh, so, Grooks Uprising and a Magma in the non foil spot. Then we got our full art containment priest, uh, non foil. And then just a couple common foils in the back. So, there we go. So, we did get one awesome hit in the, uh, the last spot there. I'm kind of thinking there might not be very many of those per collector's box, if more than one. I think the last box, we only got one, maybe two. Uh, this box, so far, one. Demon with a scratch and angel. That's kind of funny. Angel on one side, demon on the other. Aw. Aw. You know, biblical up in here. All right. So, comments. A uh, Houndmaster. He's fun. And then uncommons, and then a forest. I think the forest is actually the most expensive one, which I don't get because it's it's just a forest. It's not really that great. I mean, I like it better than the plains probably, but the mountain, the mountain and the swamp are definitely better looking to me. I think the island is too. Discontinuity. So everybody's been like, what? I don't get this card. I don't understand it. So here's the best way to use this card. If you mirror march and you got a big, huge board full of big old creatures, you discontinuity before the end of your turn, you don't have to sacrifice them because it takes that off the stack. So, there you go. That's what discontinuity is used for. Discontinuity. Yeah, I can talk. Discontinuity. That's what it's used for. All right. And then we got a regular animal sanctuary, not the box topper. And appear into the abyss. There we go. So. This guy with the Teferi's tutelage. <laughs> oh man, people are milling people on like turn four and five with this. It's annoying. All right, so, uh, pretty cool. All right, and I see another containment priest. Wow. All right, so we got our couple alternate planeswalker arts there, non foil. Then we got another containment priest, non foil. Then we got a full Garuk's Uprising and a Liliana Steward. Nothing good in the back of that one. Wow, that was pretty. Uh, Pretty weird pack. I mean, the discontinuity is okay, but it wasn't foil, so not a, not a really big pack that time. Did I, was that pack in there right side up, or did I just flip it over? I don't know. Are you guys paying attention to me? You make, make sure I don't screw up. I do that all the time. All right, we got a knight foil token with the, uh, Night Elf Mohawk. No, a uh, knight foil token with scratches right down the center of it. And a uh, goblin wizard on the back with the biggest nose ever. Alright. Commons, nobody cares about. Uncommons, nobody cares about. 
The swamp. Yes, yes, I think the swamp's better looking than the forest, but the forest is the most expensive one. <laughs> okay. A temple. Boo. Speaker Heaven's foil. And then a box topper. Spark Hunter Masticore. Nice. This guy is going to see sideboards for the rest of time, I think. Uh, this this is the ultimate Planeswalker hate that fits in every deck. And it's on a 3-4 body for 3. Uh, you got to discard a card, but... I mean, to be able to wipe out any Planeswalker in, in instant speed and give them indestructible. I mean, whew, this card is a beast. Or Masticore, actually. But <laughs> So there's our next box topper, and it's a really good one. Oh, Gorehorn. I still haven't figured out what to do with these yet. I'll figure something something creative out to do with those. Got a stack of them. Speaking of tutelage, there we go. So we got the tutelage, and we got the uh, Peer into the Abyss on the same pack. So... The combo is, people, if you see black and blue, you're probably going to, this is going to be your number one target. you got to get rid of this tutelage because they're going to cast this on themselves. They're going to draw half their library, and then you're going to get milled two cards for every card that they draw. So if they're drawing half their library, you're losing twice as many cards. Yeah, your library's gone. Two-card combo, no library. That's how it works. So when in doubt, kill the tutelage. Doesn't matter if you think they're using that deck or not. If you see a Teferi's Tutelage pop out, kill it. Find a way to kill it. Disenchants are going to be huge. Hey, Masquerade Worm. Nice. Full Art Masquerade Worm for our next foil. And, oh, this might be a little spicy pack. Oh, it is a spicy pack. All right, so we got a Masquerade Worm, Full Art, uh, non-foil. Did I say foil? Non-foil. Non-foil Mythic. And then we got a foil box topper Cultivate. The uncommon, common, rare foil box topper uncommon thing. And, oh, a standard bear. I thought it was actually a lily. <laughs> Still, though, a foil rare in the back. Finally got something decent in there. All right, so there we go. All right, and now we're pack number six. Jeez, we're only halfway through the box. We've been getting some spicy pulls already in this first half, so hopefully it keeps going like that. Construct. This is really cool artwork on the token. Uh, the stripe down the middle is not cool, but really cool artwork. And a beast. The beast token is lame this time. Maybe they could have done better than that. Anyway, sorry, um, whoever you are. Who was that? John Donahue. Sorry, but your beast is not really that. I mean, the artwork's good. It's just not scary looking. All right. Bolt Hound. He's funny. Look at the little guy. His legs are on fire. He's like, zing! And a sanctum. Sanctum, uh, yeah, that Sanctum's too cheap. Probably should have been one one black and two colorless. All right, a Plains, the Plains, a Fabled Passage, nice. Good old non-foil non Fabled Passage for art. I'm glad they reprinted it. A lot of people are upset about that, but I'm glad they reprinted it. I think I think they could have gone a couple more sets before they reprinted it, but it, it needs to stay in standard. We need fetch lands of some sort. Temple of Milady and Temple of Mystery. Two temples, one box, or one pack. Terrible. Uh, the one is a box topper, though. I'll flip that before they plummet even further. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Do I see? No. Can't be. Oh, it is. Two Teferis in one box. Wow. We got the foil and non-foil, both full art. Look at that. Oh, that pack just went up. Oh, okay. We'll forgive you for the temples because we got a second Teferi. Nice. This is number 281. Okay, so it's the same one, just non-foil. There we go. Uh, solidarity and a foil tutelage. Like I said, target number one. Get rid of that thing. If you see that thing pop out, kill it. Kill it with fire. Do something. Kill it. I guess red doesn't have much of a chance of killing that thing with fire. <laughs> you need white <laughs> or green. Green's looking pretty good right now. Oof. Oh, my God. Look at that. Oh. Let me see if you can see that. Look at that. Do you see that? It looks like somebody set their soda can on the corner of the card. Come on, Watsy. Really? Try and get it. There. there you go. You see that? The card is actually gouged, plus the stripe down the middle. Of course, you got to have that stripe down the middle on all of them. But uh, this thing's actually, it looks like somebody, oh, my camera's freaking out. It's like, dude, we don't want to be that close. That thing's shiny. Anyways, and a kitty on the back. Yeah, the, the quality of the, the cards has gone way downhill this last couple sets again. It's just... It's really sad because they were doing pretty good there for a little bit, but not so much anymore. Attrition, this card's really fun. I got that in my, uh, I built a black, white, gain and drain deck with the, some of the new cards, and that's in there. That one gets killed 
fairly quickly when it gets out on the board. <laughs> they find a way to get rid of it. All right, we got our planes, a temple, and a shacklegeist, and another box topper, the pursued whale. This guy's uh, pretty cool, um, pretty beastly, pretty big. Seven for an 8-8. Eight, eight. Uh, when he enters the battlefield, you give your opponent, gets a 1-1 one, one red pirate creature token with this creature can't block, and creatures you control attack each combat if able. Somebody pulled this out on me in draft on Arena yesterday, and that pirate totally screwed my day up because he had this guy over there, and I just had like like two threes and three fours and stuff, and I had to attack with him every turn and just get him eaten by the whale every single turn because that stupid pirate. I had no way to get rid of it because I was running like white and green. I had no creature removal. I'm like, oh, no. So I totally got hosed by that thing. So that's the Pursued Whale box topper. Another box topper. Another gore horn, of course. And a protege and another containment priest. Is that number three already in this box now, Flo? Anything in the back? Anything in the back? Oh, it's a rare. It's a rare. It's the incinerator. Cool. So we did get a Chandra's incinerator in the back. Full rare. Five more packs to go. How are you guys liking this set? Uh, there's some really, really good cards in Core 21. I'm quite, quite surprised. Um, I'm really disappointed with uh, Jumpstart on several levels. I think it's a great product, but I think the whole uh, stupid beast and separately, I think the whole them doing yet another screw up on the, the shipping and getting the product out there, causing a shortage and causing everybody to price gouge like crazy. I mean, they're really, they, you know, if they wanted to be a, a good company, they would find a way to stop the price gouging by, you know, putting a map on the stuff or something. Uh, I manage music stores, and without that minimum advertisable price, we get hosed by the websites that deal in huge bulks. I really think Watchy should put a map on the product. Um, you know, that's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think. Gorgeous Forest. Pack Leader. Full Art. non foil. And then a temple. God, we got so many temples in this box. This is ridiculous. And then a spore web weaver box topper. I uh, got that one in the second pack of the last box I opened. So there we go. Another box topper. Got the acolyte. Oh, a non-foil cultivate. I think that uh I think that's the second one I got in that spot there. And then oh it to praise Ageless Insights. So two rares in a row. Nice. And a gorehorn and a steward. So there's that. All right, four packs to go. <laughs> so yeah, let me know what you guys think about that. Um, I really wish there was a little bit more control by Watchy with the price gouging when there's a shortage like this, because I mean, really, this pack just does not want to get opened. <laughs> this pack's like, no, we're staying in here. We'll come out when we're done. All right, Goblin Wizard, most likely damaged. Yep, of course, and a Knight on the back. All right, our comments. Yeah, I think it would help with, especially keep keeping the LGSs around if there was more of a map price, and it would make the LGSs uh, actually adhere more to the standard going price if there was a map price. You know, because if the map was like, you know, ninety nine a box, they couldn't be charging trying to charge one hundred twenty. They could, but they're not going to sell any. Oh, swamp, because they're going to be ninety nine a box, free shipping everywhere else. So you know, uh, Temple of Epiphany, Primal Might Foil. And a Temple of Master. God, we're getting hosed on the temples in this box. They should not have reprinted temples. It's too early. And nothing there. Oh, a Garuk Unleashed in the actual Planeswalker border. These are probably one of the rarer ones to find in the collector's boxes. You get all the fancy extended arts. You don't really get the standard border very often. Uh, but there is a Mythic. So, And then Garuk's Uprising right after Garuk. And, ooh, a nice. I uh, didn't get a single Scavenging Ooze full art in the other box. I'm glad I got this one. That's the box topper. Scavenging Ooze. This guy is awesome in this meta right now. Uh, he stops the cat oven deck. He, he, yeah, he puts in some work. He gets rid of the, uh, God, I was playing, uh, I played a draft yesterday on Arena, and I swear I went 0 for 3 because the first three people I played all had the exact same deck. And it was this uh, black-blue deck with the big blue 8-8 eight eight that you can cycle, I think. I think you cycle them and get them into the graveyard on, like, turn two. And then, like, on turn five, they had that uh, one black, four colorless uh, black card that you bring a creature, the reanimate card to bring the creature back onto the battlefield. 
So on turn five, turn four or five, they're pulling out these uh, these huge uh, eight eight creatures, and I was like, really? Come on. And uh, so if I'd had the scavenging ooze, because I was running green too, I was running white and green. If I'd had the scavenging ooze, I could have taken care of that, fixed that problem before it happened. So keep an eye on that ooze. He's gonna be he's gonna be in every deck that's running green probably for a while because we're gonna need him because there's so much ability to reanimate stuff in this set. Bird token, treasure token. Hey, I think that's the first treasure we've gotten in these collector's boxes. Uh, Roaming ghost light. He's fun. He's got built-in unsummon. Too expensive, though. Later promise I love. That turns everything into an Johnny's Pride mate. And a Plains. Sanctum of All. Glorious Anthem. And a Ruined Halo box topper. Nice. Uh, I really like that they put Ruined Halo in here. Uh, I've actually pulled that a couple times in Drafts on Arena, and it's it's helped a lot. Rune Halo is great, great card for white. I, I can't believe they didn't print it, reprint it sooner. Last time it was reprinted was Ultimate Masters, I think. And a Gorhorn. Put that off in our Gorhorn stack. Magma. Oh, finally. Grim Tutor. Nice. I was beginning to wonder if we're going to go through two collector's boxes with no Grim Tutor. That would have been terrible. Nothing in the back. All right. So another Mythic, and it's a good one. So we're not getting... I don't think as many Mythics in this box, but they are really good Mythics. If we get an Ugin, this will be an epic box. Because uh, we already got two Teferis, one Foil, one Non-Foil, and the Grim Tutor. So, not a lot of, not as many Mythics as the last box, which I think ended up being 11, 11 or 12. Um, and a Damaged Angel. That's a shame. And a Griffin on the back. All right. So, but we are getting really, really good Mythics. Cummins. Uncommons. There's our island. Gorgeous island. It's a little dark. I think it could have been a little bit lighter. Uh, it's a little dark on the picture on some of these lands, but I do like these lands. Fire Emancipation. Yeah, if it was a little cheaper, this would be epic, but it's still, it's a brutal card. And it's a mythic, so we'll put him up here in the mythic pile somewhere, somehow. Let me move more promos out of the way here. All right, there you go. <laughs> Transmogrify. Nobody has figured out a way to make that truly effective yet. Oh, and a Gadrock box stopper. Gadrock, the Gadrack? Gadrack or Gadrock? Gadrack, I guess, because it'd be O if it was Gadrock. The Crown Scourge. He's probably going to be pretty brutal. We'll see what happens with him. Um, there we go. Another box stopper. And then we got the Solemn Silmalacrum with no, uh, no foiling. Just basic full art rare. And nothing in the back. All right, one pack to go. We've got a pretty decent box so far. Uh, not a lot of mythics, like I said, but they are all really good ones. So I think the discontinuities are our weakest one. I think that was our weakest mythic in the last box, too. <laughs> Watch, well, it's like some $40 card, and everybody's like, are you kidding me? That's the greatest card ever. There's our tokens. <laughs> I don't think so. I haven't watched the prices at all. I don't even bother looking at the prices the first uh, week that it sets out. I wait till like week two, week three, then I start looking at prices. Oh, Swampy. All right, Carvac the Spiteful. Extended, non foil. Feline Sovereign foil, and Double Vision. Some people are calling this the worst card in the set. I think it's pretty good, especially for an instant sorcery deck. Of course, there is the fact that it's way too expensive for that. Probably should have been three or four. Three would have been epic. It'd probably be a $20 card if it was three. Four, it'd probably be a five dollar card. <laughs> I think it's probably a fifty cent card. Uh, another Gorhorn. Let's put the Gorhorn aside. We got a Bosri's Lieutenant in the rare spot. Oh, do we got something spicy in the back? I think we might. I think we might. We got a Magma, and then is it? No, it's a rare. Uh, Har Harbinger. Harbinger to close it out. There's our. There's our full rare to, in the last slot. So, all right. So we ended up getting just eight Mythics, but. Really good mythics. We got the Grim Tutor, we got two Teferis, one of them spoiled. We got the Massacre Worm, we got the Chandra, we got the Garuk, and then uh, our box toppers. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven box toppers. I think that's the same as the last box. Hmm. Weird. Uh, I know some people will argue that, that the Scavenging Ooze and the Cultivate are not box toppers, they're extended art or full art. Full, I don't know. I, I can't tell the difference. If it's if it doesn't have borders and it's foil, I'm calling it a box topper. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I call a box topper. 
art all over, no border, and foil. All right, so <laughs> there you go. Uh, we got a few non-foil rares here. We got a Lieutenant, an Insight, a Cultivate, and a Harbinger. A cultivate Offset? I think that Cultivate's a little offset. Yeah, it is. You can see it's a little more on the, the right side than there is on the left side. So it's kind of pushed over. Good old Watsy quality control there. Oh, that was in the wrong pile. All right, so for our non-foils, we got pretty decent cards. A lot of temples. How many temples did we end up getting? I want to kind of look at that because that's terrible. We did get a Fabled Passage. Another temple. We got a lot of Containment Priests, too. There's three Containment Priests in there. Get a rock. The Vito. Vito's cool. So we got three temples there. And then we got a temple box topper. So four temples. And five temples. Six temples. Seven temples. Ouch. Seven temples in one box. Come on, Watsy. You're just, you're killing us. You're killing us. That's going to destroy the, some of the value down the road of these collector's boxes, I think. Because, I mean, nobody's going to want to pull, you know, seven temples or eight temples in one box. The, uh, Ikori has got the, the, the Trialands there, the, uh, the Triomes. Now, People don't mind pulling seven or eight of those in one box, but these temples aren't worth anything. They've already been printed, uh, you know, a dozen times, and they're not that effective. They come into play tap. There's no way to, there's no, you know, they don't have the ability to, to cycle or anything. The scryability is nice. I'll give them that, but yeah, th that's, a weak land base is always going to hurt the set down the road because that's the one thing that doesn't cycle out as, you know, really because the commander players all need the all the different lands and everything. So so mana base is, is very important to the game, obviously. So if they don't have a good land cycle in the set, the set's probably not going to hold a lot of value down the road. So keep that in mind. When it comes to investing in core 2021, there is some great cards, but are they great enough to keep this set going down the road as the game gets more complex with more sets coming out and after they cycle out of standard? You know, the, the mana base is going to be a huge problem for this set. So, just laying that out there. Uh, same thing with uh, Jumpstart. Jumpstart doesn't have a mana base. There's, there, I don't think... Uh, they do have the, the choice dual lands, though, which is... Those are pretty cool. So, those might actually hold some value. But uh, they're, they're, there's only one in each pack, and the rest are all common lands. Basic lands, except for the one with the fancy artwork. But it's not that, it's not that special. I don't think they're going to be... Everybody's excited about them right now, but I don't think they're going to hold any value down the road too much. They might be a buck or something, just because collectors. But anyways, I hope you like the opening. I hope you like this box. Let me know your thoughts on it. Let me know what you've been pulling out of these or if you've gotten any of the collector's packs yet. And uh, hopefully you guys have a great day. And check out some other videos while you're here. Check out some of the old videos. i got a bunch of older videos that uh, have a lot of really cool polls in them and stuff that don't get a lot of views yet. So... Uh, I know my channel is kind of new. I just started in November. Just got back in the game after a 12-year hiatus. So hopefully you guys are enjoying what I'm doing here. I'm having fun getting back into it and, and opening all these boxes and enjoying it with you guys. So I've just been mainly opening boxes for myself. But I do have boxes that uh, you can buy off me that I can sponsor in a video and open it and then send you the cards. So if you're interested in that, I do have a lot of boxes. Um, a lot of sealed product here. So let me know, and hopefully we'll talk to you guys soon. Like I said, there's probably some video suggestions up there on the end screen. Thank you so much. You guys have a great night. I appreciate your time. Take care. Bye.